stuff to cover, so we don't have to be here all night. Uh, I guess we'll start with a public comment. If you have a general comment, um, we'll take that. If it's going to be something that's going to be on the agenda farther down, we probably should wait till we get to that particular issue. So, I don't know. There's a lot of people here. So, you're going to take public comments at every agenda item? It'll probably be part of the discussion. I mean, to see, you know, what what's what's progressing, and then you know, comment about that. Um, Comments amongst who? Well, the people that are here. I mean, we'll discuss it here, and then you know, if there's any other relevant you know, if people need to interject, we'll take that at that point. For folks who can't stay around till the very end or till their agenda item, mm -hmm. do you mind if we use this opportunity now? For what? To make a public comment about an agenda item. Which, which agenda item would that be? I have three I'd like to make a comment about. <laughs> um, I would like to make a comment about the uh, licensing policy. I think mine's under three minutes. All right. All right. Uh, my name's Rick Clark. I live on Williams Street in Ward 3. And I want to begin by saying very clearly and strongly that I, the vast majority of visitors to the Meadows, share a common interest in preserving private property rights and enforcing laws and regulations against anyone who violates these rights, especially the actions that cause damage to any property, any investment, any labor, any land. We can, my concern in recent months is the obvious confusion and contention that is what this is and what is not private property in the Meadows. And I appreciate this opportunity. And, uh, I have lived on agenda items six and seven. I have lived in Northampton since 1989, mostly in Ward 3 since 1998. We've raised our son on William Street and have over the years been frequent visitors to the Meadows, mostly with our dog Champ and mostly to let him swim at what's known as the ledges. It's beautiful down there in every season. Most often we bring a trash bag and we try to remove any trash we find when we go down there. And we have participated and I have led several cleanup efforts over the years in the Meadows. I will say in all that time no one has really bothered us or made us feel unwelcome. Our visits down to the Meadows are always a pleasant experience. So when I was invited to participate in a nature walk out to Rainbow Beach, led by naturalist Lori Sanders and tiger beetle research, researcher Chris Davis in May of 2012, a well-publicized and pre-announced educational nature walk, I might add, I was really upset and perplexed by the confrontation staged by Angela Plassman the president of the Farmers Association. Essentially, a group of middle-aged, some a little more elderly, amateur environmentalists, neighbors, and other citizens interested in this conservation area were forced to end their visit, leave Rainbow Beach, and march back to a tightly packed, I think it was three vehicles, that all these folks climbed into to reach what we thought was a public conservation area and national heritage site. There, these citizens were met by uniformed, armed, local, and environmental police who had blocked their one way out with official vehicles, restricted this group from leaving, and threatened all with citation and arrest. Fortunately, after a good tongue lashing by Ms. Plassman, Chris and Lori were able to free us from this situation without any further consequence. I'm here tonight because of that incident and other ongoing chatter about further closing of the meadows to the public. I have since done a good amount of research about the land and the history of the meadows, especially the Rainbow area, and frankly, I've really enjoyed it. What I hope everyone wants to see happen is that the original intent of the purchase of Rainbow Beach can be finally fulfilled Whereas the public has nearby parking access to a foot trail into the beach. 
excuse me a moment. Into this preserved area to enjoy the natural, educational, recreational beauty of the land. So item seven on your agenda tonight is the issue about the actual roads in the meadows. I have also looked into this deeply, although it has been a little more daunting to research. However, I feel reasonably confident, and as best as that can be determined by almost every document, every single map, every relevant deed, and every historical account of the use and existence of Meadows Roads, the facts simply indicate that no one owns any of those roads and that they are open to the public and have been for over 300 years. The assessor's office has recently verified that there are no Meadows roads assessed to any private individual or entity. Many of the roads are already publicly accepted roads, and we in this town know that an unaccepted road does not necessarily mean <clears throat> that it is not a road or a right of way. So for me, the issue of the roads is reasonably clear, but for one exception. Young Rainbow Road. I hope that there can be a possible restoration of that public right of way, as it is indicated to still be there, again, in all the documents, and as recently as a year ago, in the purchase by the city of an APR on land that lies on both sides of Young Rainbow Road, which, as you know, is the closest road to the conservation area. That APR land still needs to be surveyed, as far as I can tell. I hope this is something that can be discussed as this issue moves forward. And on item six, if I could. I and others have strong concerns that it would be under, that it should be under the review and solely the responsibility of this commission to grant any farm licenses for public land record keeping and deficiencies in the Conservation Commission and the Planning Department do not allow adequate oversight of the private use of public land for farming as demonstrated by the history of the Meadows Conservation Land on Montview Avenue. This land, formerly the Aquadro Farm, drifted through the hands of a dysfunctional group of self-proclaimed permaculturists who violated terms of a makeshift license that was never properly executed, who were eventually asked to leave, and who left portions of the land in a condition that required restoration. This was the result of a license granted by the Conservation Commission and poorly enforced by the Planning Department. This avoidable neighborhood problem could be pre prevented in the future if you agree that your expertise and oversight is required in all matters agriculture in the city, specifically when granting short or long-term licenses for the use of public land, whether conservation or otherwise, in the city of Northampton. Thank you. I'm not really sure. I've never heard of it. <coughs> I'm not in the meadows. I don't know if you, you guys are in the meadows. Well, yeah, there's, but now there is a group, right? When is the public coming in and come back? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, okay. Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Lily Lombard. I'm the director of Grove Food North Hampton. Um, I haven't been before you all in such a long time that I thought I would use the opportunity, Hi, Rich, um, to uh, bring up to date on the project and also just bring um, an area of interest that we have um, on a particular agenda item we have tonight. So um, as of today, I'm happy to report that we have a fourth farm business at the Northampton Community Farm, Mockingbird Farm. They're a livestock farm based in East Hampton. So that brings our um, farm businesses to the number four, um, serving a menu of food ranging from vegetables and fruit to grain. And this is our grain farmer here, Andrea Stanley, who I'd like to introduce you to, um, to livestock. So we're growing lots of food. Uh, we have 215 gardeners, or we have 215 plots and about 250 gardeners, all growing food. And we've donated close to, I'd say, 7,000 pounds of um, food to various hunger relief agencies. Um, 
and we've uh, run a lot of farm education programs. For the first time this fall, we're going to have elementary school children from um, all four elementary schools come down and visit the farm. Um, so that's uh, a very brief update that basically it's going well and all our farmers are meeting or exceeding their sales pro projections. So that's good news. The four groups are what? The Crimson and Clover, okay. Slow Tractor Farm Growing Grain, mm -hmm. uh, Sawmill Farm Collective Growing Specialty Greens and Medicinal Herbs. And where are they located? They're on the corner of Spring and Meadow. They have a micro farm. Okay. They have one and a half acres that you see right down the corner. Okay. And then uh, mm -hmm. Mockingbird Farm is very um, cleverly rotating his livestock on both the south field currently, but also on land that needs to be rotated on the main and east field. So right now, for example, Andrea and her husband Christian have just harvested um, a crop of barley? barley barley, on the east field, and they intersowed um, clover, and now they're going to allow um, Mockingbird Farm to graze their pigs. Uh, Pigs are going on the corn, on what was the cornfield. Cows are going on the clover. Yep. So basically to re-fertilize the fields organically. Um, so that I don't hold up the meeting too long, let me just quickly get it, um, to, I think it's agenda item number six. It's related to the licensing of conservation land to, for agricultural purposes. Um, Roof in Northampton has two requests from the commission. One is that you recommend that when land comes up for licensing, that you put out a request for proposals. And that it be broadcast broadly so that people who are new to farming or who can bring um, practices that potentially enhance the conservation value of the land, they can have a crack at the application. So that's our first request, is a, a, a formal request for proposal. And the second is that you actually recommend that farming practices that enhance the conservation value of the land, because this is conservation land, um, that they be preferentially regarded in the evaluation process. Thank you. <clears throat> I just want to um, say that I'm here in support of those proposals or those ideas. Um, I Oh yes, um, my name is Laura Friedland Kays, and I came to one of these meetings before um, with some concerns that conservation land right near my house was being sprayed with Roundup, um, and I, you know, I live right next to that land. It's conservation land, and I have a small child, so I wanted to support the idea of definitely broadcasting the proposal so that other farmers have a chance, and also. Um, the the conservation land, you know, doing things to enhance that, I agree with that as well. I, you know, care about the safety of my family. I don't believe that Roundup is necessary to save this On Sylvester Road. Um, I'm Mac Everett, and uh, I live at 40 Valley Street on the edge of the meadows, and just like to uh, support and uh, I agree with a, a number of the comments that Rick has made about public access to the meadows via the public roads down there. Um, I've used the meadows a lot, um, mostly in the winter in my case, and there's a lot of people, hunters, fishermen, um, dog, dog sled drivers, uh, bicyclists, there's a lot of people that use that area as, um, and I think use it very responsibly, as a recreational resource in Northampton. Um, and I know myself, if I've been down there and I've seen people misusing the land, I go home and I call the police. So I think there's a, there's a, a benefit. Rick talked, I've also participated like Rick in trash cleanups and that kind of stuff. So. Uh, Given the nature of the meadows, that it's right close to this fairly densely populated part of the city, a lot. The fact is, a lot of people use it as a recreational resource, and I think use it responsibly. That um, it's really important to be clear that the public has the right to use these public roads down there. Thanks. Well, no.
Hi, I'm Jerry Budger, and I live on Bridge Street, and I'm here to speak in favor of uh, the mediation effort that you folks are talking about. Um, as Rick indicated, the Laurie Sanders uh, disaster was the shot that it was heard around Ward 3 and around uh, quite a good part of the community, and <coughs> the echoes reverberate today. It sort of brought into focus the issue of public access on the roads and the meadows. There's been threats of gating. We've had a road dug up. We've had all kinds of things that were <coughs> have been said. I don't know if, you know, realistically or it was just to try to, you know, keep control. But the roads are not assessed to any individual. They're not owned, privately owned. The roads were set up when the community <coughs> was established in the 1600s because every homeowner in Northampton got 10 acres in the meadows. Some of it was a parcel, a whole parcel of 10 acres. Some got five here, five acres there. Some got three, three, and four. It was all divided. The roads were established at that point so that the homeowners could get to their parcels in the meadows. They were never set up as privately owned roads by any of the adjacent landowners, and they are still not privately owned by the adjacent landowners. <coughs> There's been a lot of misconception, I think, on the part of some of the landowners down there that they do own them, that they do control them, that you, you have to get their permission to use those roads. You do not. They're not theirs. And it has caused a lot of stress and it's caused a lot of confusion. And <coughs> I'm fearful it's going to cause confrontation. And I think it's good that you folks want to do mediation. But I think we have to have the facts down first that some of these are publicly accepted streets of the city of Northampton, and the public should not be required to mediate away its right to use those roads. That's number one. And there, those roads were laid out as 30 feet wide, and some of the dirt paths are 12 feet, they're 14 feet, they're 16 feet, and there's crops on both sides of them. It, the irony here may well be that those who complain that the public is tra trespassing on private lands, they themselves have sort of abscond, uh, trespass onto the public right of way. And I think that needs to be cleared up because people should not be threatened with arrest on land that is actually public right of way and not privately owned farmland. I think these issues are really critical and I just <coughs> want to let you know that a <clears throat> number of us, myself included, are working to establish a public access coalition for the Meadows. We're going to bring together all the user groups to push aggressively for the right of public access on what we know to be public roads. So we appreciate your mediation effort. We think the facts of the, of the roads need to be established. Clearly, everybody needs to know it. Those who are going to do the mediation need to understand which roads are which. And we will be in complete support of the effort to do this, as long as the public roads are not, are not the public access to the public roads is not taken away from the public. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, my name is Lauren Caprio. I own Bear Root Herb Farm in Florence, and um, I just came because I wanted to better understand uh, local public policy making and um, just have a better relationship with my neighbor farmers in the area. Um, no, no public comment. Just wanted to introduce myself. Thank you. Likewise, if you don't mind, I'm Marvin Ward. I no longer live in Northampton, but I used to live in Ward 3 and be a member of the association and a member of the board of the association. Um, I'm here because I've worked with Rick and Jerry on researching stuff because I did some research years ago dealing with this um, with, in connection with owners of plots in the meadows. I did not research specific plots. I was working on other plots, but those owners had deeds that also listed plots those people owned in the meadows. And I looked into how the roads were laid out back in the very beginning of the establishment of Northampton and the settlement. There were no residences in the meadows in those times. They were all on Pleasant Street, Bridge Street, and Side Streets, awful roads. And what Jerry said is exactly the truth. Those were, the roads were established to allow all of the citizens to get the properties and they, each person had properties in various parts of the meadows, not only in one part. 
I've looked at a number of genes that show this. And uh, they've swapped, they've consolidated things that have happened to the plots over the years, but the roads have always been public roads. And I was a member of the party that was confronted by the uh, uniformed officers, the, the, the group that Laurie Sanders led. So I had another reason for being here because I didn't really enjoy that experience. Item isn't to discuss the substance of this. It's do you want to serve a mediation? Um, so that's what we advertise. This. I don't want to get into the substance mm -hmm. of things that, that aren't here. Um, and the, so the question is is there a role that you all think that you can add to these discussions? I, I think there is. And if the problem I can see right now is <coughs> we have been before the Board of Public Works <laughs> how many times, Jim? At least four or five. Just to maintain. What they consider public roads. What, there's a <laughs> tremendous, there's a conflict here like you wouldn't believe. Everybody's saying public roads, but uh, you go to the Department of Public <laughs> Works and there's no, they have no idea. Apparently there's research going on on this as to what roads are public and what roads are not. And until that is established, I would think it would be awful, very difficult for us to how can we possibly even start getting any kind of uh, uh, rules or regulations, if you will? I don't know. I mean, it's just a, it's just a murky mess right now. And That's the, not quite accurate <coughs> because some, some, some this, roads this have been issues to it. I mean, everybody has their own opinion on this, but I think the only way to proceed on this is to have it done professionally uh, in a way that would bring to fruition once and for all what are public roads and what are not. And I understand there's a lot of controversy on this, and everybody's got their own opinion on it, but I think it's very really difficult to proceed in a good way until we have some kind of professional opinion or ruling on what is and what isn't. I'd throw that out to the other members. Who's the professional thing you're coming from? That's right. Well, I mean, that's when it. you go to the Board of Public Works, I mean, you know, they're minimalistic because they don't want to take care of anything. So the farmers that have the land out there have to take care of the road. So, right. you know, that's... We, <laughs> we can't even get the Department of Public Works to fill in the roads they know they own so that the guys that are raising, which is a fairly substantial amount of potatoes and corn, can't even get their trucks in, even in the short distance by, for example, the roadway by the airport. We have been before them, I don't know how many times, so there's a lot of frustration here uh, on, on your <coughs> part and on our part. And the last I understood, it was in the it was in the, the court of the Board of Public Works to determine what roads in the city uh, that are being uh, you know contested as far as being public or private. And the Meadows, I would think, falls underneath that umbrella. Uh, we don't have any you know, capability, I don't believe, to hire surveyors or to, you know, get into that kind of a situation or do research on that. I would think as a commission, we would rely on the professionalism within the city departments uh, to give us the information so we could mediate. But how can we mediate when we don't even know what ground to mediate from? I 
I think it would be, uh, I, mean, I don't want to belabor this, but I think it would be important for everybody in this room who has an interest in this to lobby the Board of Public Works or lobby your city councilors, lobby uh, whoever you think can, can get this thing and move the, you know, the thing off center and get some definition on this so that uh, we could uh, be of help on that. I think it's the only way you can move this thing. I don't see this a problem as us being a mediator, but we need to know what our grounds are to mediate from. I mean, you know, I mean, the city or the Board of Public <coughs> Works has to set up, you know, what's, you know, what's concrete and what's, you know, they've kind of drifted off into. So, you know, there may be laws on the books from 150 years ago, but that doesn't mean everything is in force and, and you know, up to snuff. So, but I've actually <laughs> seen a list developed by the DPW that tells which roads have been officially accepted and which have not. Those that have not are still public roads. They've just never been officially accepted because that's a, a whole procedure that existed, that was developed long after the roads were created. But I've seen that list, so I don't understand how come you folks haven't. It might be prudent for us to invite Ned Hopper, the representative from the Board of Public Works, to come to the next meeting, or a meeting, as soon as they can. Well, you seem to think less than Marvin's talking. We, we passed that out to the <coughs> The issue is, there's roads that are clearly city owned, part of the city layout, mm -hmm. that DPW could maintain. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the question. I think the question is, of the other roads there, which roads any did the public have the right to go on, and which roads did any did the public not have the right to go on. So that the stuff that DPW is really mostly cares about, the roads that are formally accepted by the city. I think, I think that's clear. It's, you know, there are private ways which the city has the right to maintain, there's private ways which the public has the right to cross. So how do, we, how do we get that definition? How do we do that? Well, there's a couple, I mean, I guess there's basically three ways. The city could, if they wanted to spend the money, authorize the city solicitor to research on it. The city could, if they want to spend the money, to hire a surveyor. Mm -hmm. Or the city could try to collect, you know, raise funds and hire an independent party to work with. DPW, I don't think this is part of what the Board of Public Works is doing. They're focused on roads which they traditionally maintain. So it's sort of the opposite. The meadows that basically traditionally haven't maintained anything. Mm -hmm. They're focused more on the roads like in lots of subdivisions in town, which look and feel like ro public roads, which the city was maintaining, and maybe the city doesn't want. So that's been their three or four year effort to do research. As far as I know, no one's doing research in the meadows. So. Well, I think that's a key point. People to lobby the city council, especially in Ward 3, uh, and then maybe the Ward 3 city council can also lobby the city council to maybe appropriate, appropriate some funding so that we can get something concrete to stand on. Because otherwise, everybody's going to have an opinion, rightly so. I, I respect that. But until, <coughs> until we can get some kind of a definition as to what is absolutely solid that we can work on, I would say it would just be a crapshoot. It, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fair to all the parties involved. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an approach. I think it's something legitimate. I don't know the reality in terms of getting funding for it. Mm -hmm. The other approach, which is certainly a potential, is what I thought you guys were going to talk about mediation before, mm -hmm. is there could be roads, you should know no matter how much money is spent, some of the answers may still be mine. It may not be clear. So the other approach is, in essence, to see is there a consensus on what the status of the road should be. And if there's a consensus, consensus among who? Property owners and citizens. And, and if there's a consensus, then the history may matter less. If it's not a consensus, you know, and this becomes a legal matter of a court including knowing the history of the state. But let's say, for example, use Rainbow Beach as an example. Let's say, I'm just making this up, that everyone said there's a legitimate interest in people being able to walk to Rainbow Beach, and there was some agreement among farmers that here's a 20-foot corridor, which could be available for the public to walk, and here's other places which they're worried about conflict with crops. If everyone signed off on that, it may be that you don't need to spend a lot of effort in figuring out what were the historical rights. You could <coughs> I mean, it may not be possible. I'm not, I'm not saying it's possible, but 
you know, we do this a lot when we buy land. The city signs we do boundary line agreements. Signs that you know the property went from the big oak tree to the big elm tree, and we have no idea where it is. <laughs> and property boundary property owners on both sides of the line agree to sign a boundary line agreement. We don't need to spend money in surveys. You could do the equivalent. You know, where that consensus is possible, I don't know. Well, until meetings with the mayor, until public meetings, really. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> And, and some of it, if the goal is everyone wants to get from point A to point B, so Rainbow Beach is the easiest example, you can imagine there might be a consensus because there's lots of ways to get there. If, if there's a strip of land and half people think the public shouldn't be able to go on it, and the other half think they should be able to go on it, then there's probably no consensus. Yeah, there's, no, there's no mediation possible there. That's going to be well, going to figure out what that is. So, um, again, I'm not pushing it, but it's, it's one of the options to think about. I would say, think we'd have to get some planning then, as far as if the, the board would agree to the commission would agree to that, we'd have to you know, do some planning and get them to go. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, what does that mean? Do we need to have a meeting? Do we have to get together with the department heads? Uh, who would this meeting entail? Would we would be in, in, in one of our meetings or a special meeting? I wonder if we could pilot, have a pilot project, for example, uh, and take, uh, 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 there's many different roads. Well, probably the biggest thing right? probably would be Rainbow Beach. Probably that's, right. that's the, the totally most focal right. point that people want to get to, and, and that's probably where we should you know, right. direct the initial thing, right. work through that process, and then expand from that. Exactly. Because, I mean, that seems to be where, you know. In other words, instead of trying to, do the whole, do thing. whole thing. Right. They might pay to do you know, a project, a pilot project like that to see whether you're in fact that would work. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a point to agree with as you can see by all our other public here. So I mean you would probably need the landowners and probably DPW and you know the concerned parties that are you know wanting access. And a lot of it depends on whether the landowners we definitely have a public, I think we can, because mm -hmm. they're very, right. very interested parties to it. Um, but a lot of it is dependent on it. Um, I guess we could give it a try. You know, I I mean, that's me talking about it. Um, um, Chip? It's a sticky situation. I'm sure everybody in this room has never done anything down there. I've seen a lot of you folks walking or doing, you know, doing your thing. But as soon as it's public, you got the out of town people. I mean, we have enough trouble already down there. And uh, I don't know. There's, there's roads that my grandfather and great grandfather put in that are not public roads. So, uh, uh, so I disagree that everything's a public road. But uh, I'm referring to specific maps, and I don't know if you're, or yeah. you're talking about yeah. around them. Yeah, maps. well, there's a, there's a lot like that down there, and I think you got to take into consideration the landowner's rights, too. Yes. So, um, but we are up against a wall with the EPW when they say a lot of the roads aren't public, and you can't even get No, the, they don't say they're not public. They say they have not been officially accepted. That's a process that was developed long after those roads were laid out. Well, they that's won't, they a 20th won't maintain, century They process. won't maintain them then. Put it that, they won't maintain Correct. them. Correct. And that's, that's part of their... That's a real gray mm -hmm. area. And that's, and, and that's even changed over the last 25 or 35 would, years. If the road was ever public, you can always use it? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I wonder if my driver would most stage Public and accepted are not synonyms. It's an interesting legal situation. For example, Chip, let's say, you, you know, obviously your family is one of the founding families of the city of North Um Let's say, for example, uh, you're right. I mean, a lot of the fellows down there uh, will grade the roads for access to their property. This is deep in the meadows. 
And the question I would have is, after so many years of maintenance by the landowners, maybe even two generations, in fact, who does that road belong to at that point? Is it still a public, is, would it still be considered a public not accepted way? Mm -hmm. Or would it revert to the landowner because he's made, because for so many years he's maintained it? See what I mean? But these are the kinds of things that you, it's, yeah. it, it's so tough. Yeah, yeah right. It's, 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 it's a lot of tremendous a lot of little of issues there. But, on the other hand, uh, we didn't, I don't think we asked for this. I mean, for example, I believe the Rainbow Beach is owned by the, uh, the state now, and uh, actually for many years, and they've, uh, they've put this in, in, in a very interesting situation. <coughs> I imagine it's public land. Right? Yeah, the and land is partially state, partially city. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's the situation. Yes. So you've got a you've got a piece of property by the river that's of interest to many people, uh, and yet you've got uh, an, an issue of getting from a public road that we know of to that land through private property, basically yeah. of some kind. Yeah. And the state gated it, right? That's who gated it. Yeah. And I don't know whether it was the state or the federal. Actually, the Nature Conservancy funded it and worked with Armin for showing me a lot of life. Which is that's a game for Way back? Yeah, yeah, 24 years okay. ago. Okay, that was for a federal... No, Nature Conservancy is a non-profit. Oh, okay, they funded they, yeah, okay. Yeah. We, we all oh. land down in 89. <coughs> I think shortly after we went in there to put the gates in. Yeah, right. It was gated against motor vehicles. They never stopped anybody from walking down there. Right, right. I think that, that particular gate down on, uh, by the river by Harold's has been fairly effective too. On that, I think. Um, <coughs> I guess this is Americana, and I think that uh, the only way to, apparently this is an issue, and I guess the only way to, to try to make some kind of sense out of it is to have some, some public meeting as well. But we can do the first step. We can do just a map of what do we know and what we don't know. And I think it's a lot more than we don't know than we do know. <coughs> we can show all the roads on there, including show the ones that DPW. We have this on the website, the one that DPW has accepted. And so we can just start to sort of, here's the, the known pieces that you're standing on right now. Okay. And then we can start sort of pulling, saying, like, this DPW will to be part of this effort. Now, just for a definition for everybody, <coughs> what is the, there are some issues here that we, we are a commission. The Ag Commission is a body that would be appropriate for mediation, correct? I mean, well, I, I guess that's a question for you all, because there's two roles you could have. I mean, if you want to be a mediator, you sort of have to be <coughs> a, the honest broker. Mm -hmm. If you want to be strong, it's hard to be both a mediator and a strong advocate at the same time. So I think you all have to decide which role you want. But either one's a legitimate role, but you have to approach. And where does the city council go? Yeah, I'm one here. I, uh, I, I don't mean to interrupt the commissioners, because no. <laughs> uh, I know this is your deliberation, but I, I think it would be a, a tremendous step forward for the Ag Commission to uh, agree in principle to try to play the part of the mediator. But I think maybe the first steps, and I think a public meeting or two would, would be a very valuable thing for the for the public and <coughs> for the commission, but I think maybe the first step should be done uh, private, um, maybe with a, a, a group of commissioners that doesn't make up a quorum and a group of representatives, possibly from more three uh, or from the public at large, um, so that we can uh, explore some of the issues, talk about some of the real points of, of interest um, without, as uh, the gentleman um, said earlier, all letting the whole public in. Uh, and then, once those sort of discussions take place, um, to, if we have the good faith of the commission that, that we'll try, we will be trying to work on something after those private, we can have some private meetings, uh, or you can have some private, host some private meetings, and then have a public uh, process after which, if, if, you can, if you do believe that, that uh, mediation can take place in good faith. Is there any conflict in there with the open meeting law and all that, all that uh, legal entanglements? I, I would leave it to the one of the open meeting law uh, uh, masters to yeah, fight into uh, to You can't do a subcommittee and you can't do anything that represents the, the commission. 
but if you know the chair or the vice chair wanted to come to meetings with the board counselor and <coughs> DPW and planning staff and copy on the you're not representing the commission, but you're just you know you're you know, one other possibility is if you wanted some help from a neutral party, uh, this, this MAPS Office of Dispute Resolution, which has recently changed its name, but they have a free uh, clinic service for mediation. <coughs> and Lorraine from that office would be glad to come out and just help run a meeting. You know. Yeah, I, I saw that last night. Yeah. I, I do think mediating is a skill set. Right. And I, you know, yeah. so it's not just being fair and listening well, it's like mm -hmm. how do you talk to both sides and how do you bring them a little closer, so. Uh, I think it's a good idea. this in the next <coughs> month and we do we have a time frame for this to it's gonna take some time. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well I mean I, I think if you're interested we can at least start collecting some of the data mm -hmm. and with it. I, mean, I don't I don't know what the research he really has of matter ratio. <laughs> So we can just figure out what's the data that they have. Mm -hmm. you know, out the things out there. Well, I'm just thinking, I mean, if we want to do this, we need to get in touch with this person for the mediation thing. So, I mean, that's why I'm trying to figure a time frame to try to see if we can start coordinating people to do this. Well, so, I mean, are we looking at a, a month? Are we looking next meeting? To this? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things in mediation, that is to do a formal mediation, you really need to know what people's positions are. Well, I thought we're trying to do a groundwork thing first for right. mediation, so I mean. <coughs> so maybe, I mean, we can collect some data about the use of know who from the commission is interested in, you know, coming to whatever meeting. All right, so we should try to put this together for the next meeting so that we'll have some more information to work on this. Mm -hmm. Is this the part where you take public comment on point seven? <laughs> yes. I mean, I've heard a lot of really good things this evening. But one thing that concerns me is that the DPW seems to be a body that has self-interest in not finding roads. I heard this gentleman say, the DPW care, does not care to maintain and deal with more roads, so they, I believe, <coughs> might be biased against recognizing roads. This other gentleman in a purple sweater uh, has made a great comment in that whoever does the actual mediation should be not the Ag Committee itself, because it has an interest. There should be a neutral mediator. And the third thing that I want to comment on and question is the concept <coughs> that there should be a non-public meeting to lay out the issues. I cannot imagine the advantage of having a non-public meeting. And I would, I'm not in favor of that. Okay, so I guess my question is, if you don't want us to be a mediator, why are you here? No, no. <laughs> well, wait, this, 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 other fella, this other fellow here. No, wait, I thought you said you thought we would be impartial if we were in the mediation position. If, if, if the question of roads is going to go to mediation, <laughs> then there's the agricultural interests and there's the interest represented, let's say, by this gentleman here, Rick Clark. Those two points of view should be mediated or brought into agreement by a non, by an impartial person, not by the Agricultural Commission itself. Yeah, I don't understand what we come into then. Well, you would be a party at the table, presenting your points of view, 
and there would be someone advocating how for public you, roads. How did it appear on the agenda yeah. for this? For this discussion period? opportunities for public access to public beach, to Rainbow Beach. That's how it was edited. No, no, I'm on number seven. Yeah, that's what he said. Discussion of opportunities for public access to Rainbow Beach. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yep. I guess it's number eight. I'm talking as, far as, as far as the mediation part, <coughs> that is an agenda item as well. So if this body is self-evidently, you know, biased and could not function as a mediator, then I'm not quite sure why it's on the agenda. Foreman, I'm not on the Ag Commission, but um, Pete and I work with Ag Commissions in other towns. And um, so Ag Commissions um, are an advisory board in a lot of ways, and they provide information, advice to others, uh, to the Conservation Commission and other boards of the city. Um, but they also oftentimes are a place where uh, Complaints are heard back and forth between the public and private farm owners, and so they they've held. And it's a new kind of commission that started up in the last eight years, maybe. So it's a, it's a, it's about discovering what the role is. But I think the difference is, I think what both he and I were saying is, it wasn't that the Act Commission couldn't be the umbrella place for the mediation to happen, but rather that it made sense maybe to have a skilled mediator <coughs> underneath that umbrella. We. One of the, um, the charges that I've always known of the Act Commission is to be in support of agriculture of all types and to promote it. So yes, in that sense, we have a charge. We are here to promote agriculture and preserve it and, and, and support it. Um, I've been to a few um, state-level uh, Act Commission meetings and um, I, I think we're not trained as mediators, so I, I think your idea of bringing in this particular, I, 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 matter of fact, it was brought up at a meeting in March, uh, and we could probably all learn from that. And uh, if you're all experts, it's supposed to be the only way. So I would say that seems to make a lot of sense. I think that might give us a point upon which we know some training, if you will, and, and, and learning, and, and maybe advice on how to act as a... As a yeah, typically it's the Ag Commission that makes the request mm -hmm. for that uh, person to come out and gather information and then help mm -hmm. guide everybody through the process. I just think that's something that makes an awful lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Can I add something with Lori Sanders? Um, this, I think from my perspective, one of the things that occurred here is uh, we thought we had permission. We were with one person, a researcher at Rainbow Beach, who had the key. And so I think on that particular day, it, it brought up this larger issue of public roads. That, that's one issue over here. But I think going back to what Wayne mentioned a couple minutes ago, I'm thinking about if we just I think everyone here, I certainly, I remember 20 years ago, Rainbow Beach, early on, was a mess. You know, people were driving down there and building uh, structures. And I don't think anyone in this room has any desire for it to return to that. And I think, personally, uh, looking at it from an ecological perspective, it's a challenge to figure out how you can get public access and yet prevent the kind of destructive access that we confront in the meadows all the time, especially that you, representing the landowners there, uh, are in charge of representing. So I guess just thinking, OK, so DPW um, has an existing map that shows the public roads. And maybe that really is sort of, at this stage, a great jumping off point, and then to see, is there a way for 20 foot access from one or two different ways of quickly getting into the land that's state slash city owned, working with those individual landowners. So it isn't this 
giant process, but it's very strategic thinking about Rainbow Beach access. And at the same time, I'm very cautious about having access to Rainbow Beach because at the present time, it's in very good shape from an ecological perspective. There's limited access, there is access, but it's limited, but it would be nice to provide access from my perspective from the, from the land side. We don't want more YouTube videos of Rainbow Beach on the access to four-wheel vehicles. I mean, we see all the impacts, very ecologically sensitive areas, further down toward the size uh, pit, etc. That area is a, is a disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think there's common ground right there. I think this is something all of us in the Commission have been battling for quite a few years, is vehicles. Right off the bat, so uh, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, my name is uh, Fred Zimnock. I'm from Ward 3. Uh, I have a slightly different uh, opinion, perhaps, on uh, public access to Rainbow Beach. Uh, my understanding uh, years ago when I learned about Rainbow Beach was that it was a conservation area, area and um, it had special uh, standings because of the tiger beetle and there was uh, environmental conditions down there that were important to be preserved. So that at that time, the only access to the beach was by boat. So you still can get to Rainbow Beach if you want to row down the Connecticut River and hop on the beach. Um, and I always assumed that the limited access was because there was a reason to protect a lot of people from running around there for all sorts of reasons. So my feeling actually is that it would be nice to have land access to Rainbow Beach, but of a limited character. Not necessarily any Tom, Dick, and Harry <laughs> running down there and tromping around and building this or building that or stepping on this or ripping this up or taking plants or doing whatever. So yeah, walking access would be nice but limited because of the delicate nature of the area. Well, that, that's another very important point. The um, unlimited access. There are climbing activities going on there on a regular basis, and there are climbing activities in some cases where uh, it's probably in the, there are large vehicles down there uh, pulling fairly substantial tillage equipment at certain times of the year. There are times of the year when there's cultivation going on of all types. Uh, so I think that needs to play into this too, because at some point where the public is just better off for their own safety, not, to, <coughs> not that people you know, are looking to cause some harm, but just simply because of the activities that are involved in, in agriculture today. Uh, that's very, very important in this whole thing. I think farmers are not the ones who have to worry about all that. <laughs> Can we agree to ban four wheelers? <laughs> <laughs> you can agree to anything. If you're doing it's another thing. Well, That's the problem. We have, we, believe me, we have advocated for that. We talked with the police. We invited the police here. We, we, we had a poor fellow in here that uh, was farming uh, some land that's owned by Arcadia, mm -hmm. who was just about ready to harvest and just had his crop just destroyed. Right. Yes, I was I was eating. Uh, I, mean, I was out there that fellow. I, and, and that's that's what kills everything. That's because you, all you take is one or two people like that, and it gets the farmers up, and they just want to keep everybody up. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, I, you know sure. if you had a house and people right. walk by, and all of a sudden one day somebody threw a bunch of stones to the window, you wouldn't want people walking by the house anymore. You know, it's, it's, How many it's times have you guys dealt with that shit? I mean, yeah, all the I've dealt with it on my own. Right. We've got corn ready to yeah, harvest, so. and we've got people driving through and making roads right. through a whole cornfield, and they're locking down thousands of dollars worth of crop. One thing we all have to realize is farming is, is, is a thing we, we're charged here in this commission to support and promote. But farming is also a means of making a living. It's not a hobby down here. These guys are, are employing people <coughs> uh, of a substantial amount. They're investing in equipment. They're, they're, they're investing in the land. And uh, it, it's, it's something that we, it's, 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 it's their livelihood. And uh, so protecting that land is, you know, 
pretty important from these vehicles. It's, uh, and who we can talk and who the landowners are that, you know, actually in that in specific, Rainbow, right. particular area, Rainbow Beach area. Mm -hmm. I know it's at the southern end, but that's about as much as I can mm -hmm. Beach. I believe that was right in front of our property, if I'm not mistaken. That should be in the vicinity of Harold's go-kart track, is that correct? Harold's go-kart track all the way down, all the way south of the Shepherd Line. As a matter of fact, I was mowing hay down here the other day, and there was a a school bus park and some children were walking, were walking down through there, through there. I think the blues are there. There's three gates. There's a gate there, there's a gate just west of Shepherd's Island, there's a gate in the middle of the city's road. They're all going to be the same. I'm sorry, I don't know what There's three gates, there's three gates there. Right? Yeah. Sort of the northern part by the go kart track, the southern part would get thinner near Shepherd's Island, and somewhere in the middle of there exactly where it is. But which is since this property is sort of a drop off that's there. So a motion is not necessary, but information gathering. Yeah, right, right again. Okay. okay. So we want to stay in the meadows and go to the uh, standpipe, no parking zone? So this is really just an update. Um, the one on Ventures Field Road, as far as I know, they can saw the signs. The one on Cross Path and Ascension, there was a problem with the description of the road and I had to go back to Council. And I don't, I haven't been there recently. So I what road is that? On Cross Path. Um, that, they haven't put the pipes up, there's no parking signs yeah, there. We're talking about the one on the Hockenham Road, which Hockenham. is a crucial one. Right, is that the pipe? Just past Zinals. Right, those I think have been installed, right? I haven't been down there, and I forgot to ask today. The ordinance, the ordinance passed four hundred. I know where the signs are I, I, I have not looked, I don't know. Okay. If you don't mind, somebody go yeah. by and just give me a call or email or something. You think they're... The they're ordinance there. passed four months ago, and parking was all set to install them. They found a problem with cross paths, so you can go ahead with that, but as far as I know, they found it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one on cross path, which was near Old Ferry Road, that was discontinued years ago. Well, that was the problem, is the street names yeah. varied in different sources. And so the, the ordinance... one on Ferry Street sources. Extension, that, that's the one we were talking about. Right. Right where the road bends. Right. And the one on Hockenham Road. Those, those two are the major ones. Hockman Road, I think, was done, but if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Right right. I didn't see it, but it maybe it's back in okay. the trees a little bit. Okay. I know I was told they were done, but I haven't actually gone to look. Speaking of, I don't want to belabor this anymore as far as the roads go. Would you email Ned Huntley and ask him if, if we had our conversation with the Board of Public Works last spring? That we, we would assume that they would be doing road maintenance uh, as they told us they would. Uh, in the fall, yeah. In the fall. Okay. Uh, just a reminder that the roads that we've discussed with them, uh, at least the main access points, need, need work. Okay. Okay. So we just we planned it for January, and did we have a date in the middle of the month, I thought? Right, so you set the date, <coughs> so, so yeah, yeah, the 11th is the main date, and the 18th is the same. So that's been so confirmed with something. So 830 to 1130 is going space. <laughs> we were talking about... Yeah. 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 Just by way of background, 
So this is probably the seventh year, I think, that where we've had two Western Mass Regional Ag Commission conferences, and uh, the number of ag comps has grown from, I think, 30 up to well, well over 150, of which probably half are in Western Mass. So uh, this year, what we've got, thanks to your offer to, to sponsor uh, the one for the, for the Valley here, uh, following the, the great meeting you had last year, um, we'll have one in Hancock, at Hancock Shaker Village on December 7th, and then this will be January 11th, and we'll advertise them together. So we were thinking, you know, Phil and I met about this last week, and uh, there, there are a few others who are willing to help with the planning, along with you folks. Uh, we thought we'd get a, a save the date notice out right away to all the ag towns, but I think there's interest in, in going beyond just ag town members as possible attendees. Farmer, farmers, other interested people. Well, you know, you, you know our format that we had last January, we had the vendors, and that's, that was really what we were vendors. And yeah. we that was the, our yeah. intent, was yeah. trying to introduce yeah. farmers right. to the, right. the, the you know, resources yeah. that are out there. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, are, would that be appropriate? Well, it might be. I think th our hope is that, you correct me, Phil, but the, the main thing this will accomplish is to get these ag comms galvanized again and get them talking to each other again. We missed a year last year because the MAAC, the Mass Association of Ag Commissions, wanted just a statewide meeting. And, uh, and I think what, what's happened is you've got a wide variety of, of uh, status of each ag comm. Some of them are really active, some of them are not so active, some of them haven't met for two years. So it really is going to be important, I think, to emphasize getting, you know, giving them the tools again, getting, getting them in communication. So if that makes sense, it, there may not be space to get all the vendors involved this time. But. Well, I'm wondering if uh, uh, the vendors could uh, be invited to set up a, uh, especially you mentioned getting the public in, is that what you Yeah, mean? yeah. Well, uh, I mean, maybe, I, maybe this is a good idea. I think if you have the vendors up there every year, it's just, yeah. Yeah, that actually might, might be very good. But uh, if you could have them have a display and maybe man it if they like to talk to people, sure. also, not necessarily bring them up and have them introduce themselves, it just be invited to put up a display. Yeah, there's always uh, break time right. in between sessions. People can circulate and that, that might work. And there's, it looks like there's space. It, is it going to be in the same? Yeah, so that's a big space. And yeah, I would probably suggest that we build it in somehow because you're not going to want to have a, a breakout session and have someone get a little bored with their group of five and then walk over and talk to the tractor supply. Right? You don't want to have competing interests. So it could be that maybe we extend lunch a little bit or something like that and the vendors know they're there for an hour or something. Right. Something like that. I mean, because you don't want to put it on the end of the day, people are ready to go, no. it's Saturday, they're done, they already gave up some work on Saturday. Um, so just in terms of time, so for now, based on what commission discussions that we just saw in the morning, we figured 11 work, we mentioned lunch, we could potentially extend it, I, just, I need to know that because there's all the space we're saying. So if you think people are willing to stay until maybe 4 o'clock, I think we <coughs> would build it enough time. But what we thought was, we made, it may be a good idea to start with a general roundtable so that everybody knows who is there and they put their some of their concerns out and we might have a few very successful outcomes get special reports and everybody. Well, we thought one time. of the goals was when you leave that day, you'd know maybe two other people <coughs> who you thought were really sharp and you got their name and number and because maybe they're a step ahead of your commission on some issue that's before you right now. You know, so there's that connection that happens because, yeah, there would be, there's just not enough paid people running around to provide assistance that I think that networking among farmers and others on ag commissions would be really good. So if you started, say, at 9 o'clock, and if we're lucky, we'll have Greg Watson, the commissioner, come out and, and give a welcome and somebody from the MAAC to uh, both give a little bit of background about um, what's going on around the state and then uh, do the round table and then maybe another morning workshop, break for lunch, maybe have your vendors involved in the next phase and then the afternoon a couple of workshops. Yeah, I think uh, if going up to Hancock that time, right? 
Is 8.30 a good time to start? Too late? Well, if you're talking with your master, you're probably 8.30 is probably the earliest you want to get going. Okay. Because, you know, they're going to take an hour. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. They won't necessarily come from Berkshire County, although a few usually do. Right. But yeah. But yeah. In three counties, so. Yeah. 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 It's a little bit easier, but when you start getting all right out. We can change it. We'd sign up for 8.30, assuming it's half hour set. Mm -hmm. So the 8.30 yeah. is assuming we opened at 10.00. I mean, at 9.00. Yeah, so I would say have an 8 a.m. for us, so we're ready to go at 8.30 to have people take coffee and The other thing is to make, make the upper play at Cisco where it is so that they can have the coffee and donuts set up that you want to have them. That worked out really great. I think that's what they're going to do. I think they make a little money, and I think it's appropriate to use this in school. We need to figure out lunch arrangements, too. Am I right that Smith's boat will be able to provide a lunch? I don't know. I don't know. We'd have to... Yeah, yeah. John's not, John's not here. here. But I think that's a very good point. Um, how did they do it down in the Sturbridge? What happened there? We have our Sturbridge, but we've had uh, Beth Cook over at Flavors uh, give the, uh, you sure, know, do, do cater the meal of the Deerfield every year. And she does a great job. We could do something like that. But if Smith Boke is able to provide them, you know. Well, this is a place where the kitchen already did. Yeah. And they yeah. paid for us to ask them if yeah. they would be willing to do that. Find out. Yeah, they need some be. help sourcing locally and labs. Their cook is the, the teacher, John Kislow. Oh, great. Well, that's awesome. yeah, great. Cook and really great. into local food. Great. In fact, they have a lot of food right there from, well, it's in January, I guess. Right, but, right. Yeah. I know. I was thinking that too. They grow yeah. stuff right there. But. Yeah. Well, by the time, we're, our hope is that we'll have an agenda finished up by mid to late October so we can send that out to everybody. And that will have to include the cost. You know, usually we charge 15 bucks, and that covers the meal. So, and then we get subsidies. You know, the department will help, and uh, you see this help, and we'll, we will probably do the registration. We'll do the registration. Wayne, I guess you need to... I don't think, by the way, way, I want to just say, I don't think 15 is too much to ask for a five-hour no. day with a meal. Yeah, you know, I mean... Yeah, right. You want people to feel like it's worth something, right. also. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I've attended a couple of these. I just think it's a, it's a world information for people. Some of it is stuff that you used to, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to see what all the different communities are dealing with. Because I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, not everybody has a meadows, and you know, other people have other different concerns. And, you know, it's so just. Since I'm doing logistics, just so I know. So we want the space at 8, so we're ready to go to 8.30. Mm -hmm. When we need a space until half an hour after. Yeah, yeah half an hour after. So when if we go to 3, okay. uh, then we we'll try to get out of there by 3.30. Okay. And in your head doing a bunch of, if I'm going to ask them if they can cook, yeah. if we're charging $15, what are we, can we offer them for the meal? Okay. Oh, yeah. Just find out what, what they would normally charge. Okay. And we'll work around that. Okay. We don't want them to do it at a loss. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, mm -hmm. I mean, some of the fueling for them, and they used to do buffets and stuff up there, too, which were fairly reasonable. So, right. You now, they, the labor's pretty, pretty inexpensive. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the food. Yeah. 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 We do have yeah. fundraising yeah. abilities, so right. but over and above the fees. I mean, yeah. we always have a number of people, speakers, uh, you know, who, others who come in without paying the fee, which is fine. Yeah. We just need to cover it. So if they, if they won't do the meals, then we can pay <coughs> it, but before you send another, so then you try a confirmation we actually have the space. They only have to right. yeah. 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 I do that tomorrow. So. We do have a backup plan with this, with that and play with this this Well, I mean, we're in a, big enough advance, and I think, you know, yeah. If we give her a notice, I'm sure she'll be back to put it on the list. So. Uh, the earlier you could find out and get a commitment. Okay. The space should be easy. I'm not sure who contact until we finish a few more days. Yeah. And we'll build this as being co-sponsored by MAAZ and Northampton Anchorage. Makes sense. And Caesar. No, it's changed since he was there. The only the only kicker might be it's a Saturday, and it might be a little that might be an issue. Well, if it isn't, we still have a backup plan. Let me exactly. give them the first opportunity. So, 
Do you folks want to crack at the, uh, the exact agenda, the workshops that, are, that we're going to have? I mean, we, we had talked about uh, land protection, uh, maybe the, the FDA food safety regs, although the coming period ends in mid-November. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what the status of that is. We've already had a meeting on that, haven't we? Uh, well, yeah. 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 That's already been pretty well. Yeah, so uh, well, I mean, they're still, they're still taking comments on it. I mean, that was basically the presentation. Yeah, the comment period, so I think November 15th. Yeah. I mean, the question is, do you want an update about the farm, you know, some yeah. the farm bill and the FDA safety? I mean, it doesn't have to be a long, I don't know yeah. if it's a workshop, but it might be, it be everyone gets to hear 10 minutes on that, you know. Well, um, uh, farm succession and, and estate planning, transfer planning, you know, business business arrangements, that kind of thing. Uh, Kathy Roof has offered to come in. She's at Land for Good and does does a terrific job with this. It doesn't need to be very long. It can be 20, 30 minutes. That makes sense. The thing I like is that they have at least the lawyers. Yeah, we've also had Bob Ritchie, who was general counsel for the department, uh, and he's <coughs> he's willing to come unless somebody from the department wants to come out too. There's a, there's a new general counsel who's used to very lots of back. Yeah, I think covering the legal. Issues and questions make sense. I think uh, Brad Mitchell from the Farm Bureau also is yeah. a very helpful person. Brad has helped on these too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he mm -hmm. carries the legislative side. He's up in the House. And, uh, the, whatever in all the state politics. legislature. Right. He's still very informative, you know. Well, I think Phil mentioned the point that we don't want to talk at people all day. Right. We want as much discussion yeah. and back and forth as possible. So that was probably my only critique of last year. Nobody had pretty good attendance. But it was sort of like one person after another just more and more and more and after a while you were just like enough, you know, stop, stop. <laughs> You know, so I think it's important for people to have a chance. Well, you to know, you know, Phil, we hadn't expected that many. I know, so, I know, it was, it, was it was great. It was great. It was kind of a surprise. Yeah. And, and, and uh, they had some agencies. We did try to encourage them to limit it, uh, but some of them I, I mentioned it to them to try to keep it short. Uh, but they got uh, very involved. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this year with a set agenda, yeah. we can have someone who's keeping the time. Yeah. Keeping the time. Yeah. Well, a lot of the vendors have, have websites that are willing to publicize it once they, you know, if we have the information, they, you know, I know Burners and Farmers Supply, and then uh, there's a couple more. Virtually, the equipment up in Conway was very interested in coming. Yeah. Uh, there was another one. I know that. And, uh, and uh, there's several others, I think, out there. Our, is it outdoor? Is that the name of 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 the name the name of 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 the We'll, we'll bring in a draft agenda, bounce it off people, and try to try to get things pretty much wrapped up so we can get the. the you know, maybe have like five or six options, so you like, you know, pick the ones that we, we think. We could have relevant. some concurrent sessions. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have a big turnout. Yeah. that's always a good idea. Right. Could you get a sense from previous meetings? How many people you about? Usually, we've been getting anywhere from forty to seventy. Okay. So, good. ideally, we'll get more than that because we, 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 we do good advertising. <laughs> Yeah, what's our now? Um, this would be for the western part of the state. Well, Berkshire County will have their own. They'll have their own. They don't like to drive over the mountains. So how far east will we go with this? Well, it'll be on the, the mass. Yeah, I mean, we'll the pull the the field, the field, field sometimes get people over yeah. here, or you know, so western Worcester, Worcester County, but yeah. Yeah. pretty much hand in hand, Frank. Okay. How how will it work in that space to have two sessions going on at the same time? Will that be a noise issue, or is it? What if we could use the library? That's not that might be nice. I mean, they have a great session yeah. here and session in the cafeteria. I wonder if that could be done. Mm -hmm. Can you check them? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I don't think the library would be used that day. 
Yeah, you could have the smaller <laughs> session in there. <laughs> they have a big hallway too, which they use on open house for many, many of those little conferences. Do you know when the next meeting is? We haven't set that date. That's number nine. Do it. We'll check it out now. We've been jumping around here like the frog. Thanks for taking this up. Sorry. Because I sit on all your important equipment. Why are you So Wednesday seem to work for you guys? Yeah. Well, I'm out of town 16th, while well, Wednesday the 23rd or 30th, are wide open for me. 23rd makes sense? Yeah, I mean, that's you know, pretty close to a month away. Yeah. And you often switch to earlier at some point. Do you want to stay at 7 or do you want to go earlier? Chip, at that point in time, <coughs> we're using the beat on the cornfield. Yeah. yeah. 7 o'clock is 7 o'clock. Yeah. 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 Will that work for you? Depending on whether it's up to that point, yeah. It's just a piece of board meeting. They don't want to change the time machine or something. So, so you don't get in there. Yes. We're so staying at 7 and 23. Okay. Alright, same location. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see. The whole meeting across the hall is free. Okay. Yeah. I'll do it if I can not free. If I come upstairs, I'm going to get in third of all. Yep. Great, thanks. Okay. We should be able to get those notices and registration info out by the end of that month. Okay. Thank you all. Right. Thanks. thanks to see everybody. Good. 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 I got a question. Uh, so, yeah. 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 Hopefully that's that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we're trying to make this fair. For renting cars, so we get the town to town land. Thank you. So we are in the licensing for conservation areas, very cultural, and related policy. Extra coffee is going to want to just know about our, our holdings. The trick if you want the extra copy is to print it backwards, the letterhead blocks part of the, the text. But. So this is just a list of what the properties are as so you know about. So there's five. So there's five properties which which are used in some form or other by farming. It's different and these are all, mostly are very small. We have only two that have any size. Um, two properties we've talked about converting, and I just gave you a list of APRs, but we can only write to the APRs. Um, so let me just walk you through, you guys let me tell you sort of where they are. Um, so one of the issues is, is you heard from both Lily uh, and then Pete talked about sort of, you know, do we do a competitive RFP process? Mm -hmm. The trade-offs that Conscom was to is um, we've had a fair number of experiences with failed license holders. Go for it, the we found a, a license holder in the Meadows who was unable to con continue our work. And so we really like when farmers successful. From our standpoint, we like keeping that farmer, and from their standpoint, there's some predictability. So the balance is RFPs are great to sort of broaden and have a discussion, but just giving some renewal that if you don't screw up, we can renew it again for two years. The dollar amounts are small enough that we have a legal right to renew to that mm -hmm. RFP. So it's sort of a philosophical of rewarding good behavior mm -hmm. and not. So, and that goes across in some places that's more important than others. Um, so, uh, we have 16 acres um, along the Kennick River. This is being leased by Enterprise Farms. We converted this to um, organic a few years ago, um, nine years ago, I think. So the conditions have to be organic. We're about to hire someone to cut about eight tenths of an acre of brush, and we hope that we get to expand the field. We're not exactly sure the soils are below that. Um, we had some discussions. River Run is right there. So there's a lot of human garden talks in the city, and enough to meet, projected demand for years. 
but they're not something close to every project. And there's some people who don't want to drive somewhere. And River Run is our largest apartment complex in the city. Frankly, our worst served project. It's sidewalks. That so we played with could we carve out a half acre of community gardens for them? Um, so it might be half acre them. If we're expanding the field by half an acre, we can still expand those. So their lease runs out now, basically, in this year. So we're we had to do something with them. So one of the discussions for them is do we want to renew with Enterprise Farms? They're a wonderful tenant. It goes back to that theory of do we just renew and reward it, or do we open it up again and just enter these Enterprise Farms? What would you practice in the past? You, we usually, when we've had a good farmer and we haven't had problems, we figure it's good. Um, yeah, I guess it's, you know, um, trying to think, yeah, I think it's always been true. We've only gone to lease, we've gone, we've gone out to bid and we haven't had a farmer or when we had a problem. It's probably the better way because you put a lot of money into conditioning the land, which is good for quite a few years. That's right. And, and we can only do three year licenses. Else, so. so he not only conditioned it, but there was a, large area of brush that's becoming trees between two fields and he invested in taking that down. I don't think he's getting his money back during the three year lease uh, license. He's longer. Um, but you know but so so Conscom is only one of recommendations if you think about that. Um, so that's the first you want to talk about each one individually or should I go through all of them first? I don't know. I, I, I don't see any problem with that one as it goes right now. I mean, are we looking for recommendations? Is that what we're looking for recommendations. How many years has he had it already? He's had it for a while. I think three. It's three three year term. I believe he's on his third one, but I'm not sure. So he had it before that, too. We did. Nine years. Right. I think he's had it nine years. Yeah. 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 And then we had it three terms. Two yeah. years we let it lie fallow. Yeah. What happened is we couldn't find a farmer for one year. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, oh, as long as we couldn't find a farmer anyway, that's the opportunity to switch it to organic. So we deliberately didn't find a farmer for a second year. And before that, we had someone doing production of corn and chemicals. Yeah. And it does about one every one out of every three years. It all goes under water, too. Yeah. That's I mean, right. I mean, it, I mean everything. Just Absolutely. About everything. Right. So it's a risky site. You don't make money in all the years. And it's not a good site for vegetables. For that reason. So it's, you know, it's corn or hay, maybe soybeans and enough fat. Is there, is there any opportunity on that piece? To provide public access to this to this land, in terms of walk-in access, if somebody wanted to carry a kayak in, um, or just access to the riverbank. There's certainly access across the property of the riverbank. It would be very difficult to get on the boat because the access the public can use is south of the state conservation and recreation property, and it's a long walk-in. We have an access way across Dross off your home. Yes, that's not open to the public. Right. Um, so the public would have to go off the road, roads. So it's not a good place. It's Can you way. walk in at that gated access? At no. that gated access. No, it's private property for Drawsdale's, and our easement across Drawsdale's property is just for maintenance. Space. If Drawsdale's is granted, we you know we've talked about trying to you know they're not running as a funeral home right now. Right now, there's cars back there. I'm sure they wouldn't want a lot of public access. When that property gets reused at some point, you know the cars get moved to King Street when Volkswagen's done. So I don't know what the future of the site is. But, but at least in terms of walking, people can walk there. But you wouldn't carry a boat because it's a long way. Um, right. So you all—it sounds like you're comfortable that not doing a bad bid for this one. I mean, you know, he's invested a lot of time and stuff, and it's, I mean, it's not like he's doing anything risky. Yeah. Leave all well enough alone. It's making it so the second one, this is Manhattan Potash. We just acquired this a few years ago. Rich knows the property well because he used the previous owner hired Rich to cut it. It's about a five-acre parcel of land, of which one acre is farmable and four acres is pretty crappy. Um, we acquired it with the condition that we keep the entire five acres clear. So in essence, we don't get any money for this one. What we get is the farmer gets to farm one acre and we're responsible for cutting or five. This is the one that we had a farmer last year who failed. You know, the site flooded and she walked away from the property. Um, so we actually lease it to the per or license it to the person across the street. But one acre is not support, not worth moving your equipment there, but they're already across the street, so they're bringing their equipment and all doing is picking up to cross me. What's the experience been with this? Great. 
And it, it, <coughs> we don't have a condition for organic, but my understanding is he's doing organic. That's a tough piece. If he's done well, you feel we have money for you, obviously, but you have. And uh, if you feel that he's doing well, it doesn't make sense to change it. Especially with all these things, you know, our biggest liability is we don't want him to grow up. So we can't find someone, we have to pay someone to cut it. Out. So, yeah. Um, I remember that particular uh, lady who tried to find us at home. And uh, that was, I think that was a little bit of a disaster. And, you know, there's no water on the site. It's hard to do a lot of things, though. There's lots of standing water, but there's no lot of water. So the next one is one we may want to rethink. So we acquired a piece of property. Um, Maria Tomasco bought a piece of land, and she owns 10 or 12 acres. And she leases her land. Our parcel is really too small to find somebody. So we basically told her, who's ever using her property, they can use our property as well and saves us the management of the for doing. So we've never tried to do this one. It's been easy for us. Again, our property is in good condition. We're pleased with how it's gone. We don't get any money for it, but we keep it interactive. That's use. what a good part of the time. That's what a good part of the time, right. And I think it only makes sense as part of the bigger piece. I frankly don't even know who's, who's using our property right now. I'm not sure. Who's the team? Is it Town Farmer or not? It's not Town Farmer. No, not anymore. Yeah. 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 They pulled out. It used to be capped years ago. He's not even cutting hay off of it. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. But I remember it being all ruddy and wet that last year, the year before. Well, Jasinski's great because he's obviously right there. Yeah, but yeah so me, I'm staying there now. So well, it's done. Yeah. Okay. Charlie, yeah. Charlie, I think he was back to using the other, Maria's other land. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, then, the, I mean, maybe we want to do something directly with him instead of going through someone, but. I mean, he's been great in a great relationship with him. So, again, my inclination is maybe we should do a license directly, but, but he's used to be a holder. When he, you know, we just did that 80 acre APR program with him last year. It's been a wonderful part of it. So, um, so Monty, this is the one you heard from a couple of people. Monty, we're changing the pattern, so it's no longer property. It's we're no longer licensed by an electrical farmer. We're in the process of doing an MOE memorandum agreement. What's the M? MCCC? Yeah. Meadows, someone here is from it. Meadows City Conservation Coalition. Coalition, thank you. Um, so it's basically it's in, in Meadows in both Ward 3 and Ward 4, although as far as I know, most of the members who move the property they work in have been Ward 3. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of, of giving them conservation restrictions on three separate parcels of land that we own. Um, parcel of Sheldon Field we got from Jasinski. They already got a CR from the rest of Sheldon Field from Broke Broke Coalition. We're doing a parcel with Jessica from Just Sense State. I'm sorry, Conservation Restriction. Um, a parcel be off uh, Pomeroy Terrace and then this parcel. So they're going to, again, they're commit to leaving the land open and whether it's farmed or whether it's for kids to kick balls with, it's really up to them. You're still so talking about Montview Avenue. Right. Yes. yes. Well, there's a lot of brush growing up there. There's a there's lot, a lot of, of brush growing up there. Could, could you <laughs> bring, us, bring me up to speed on this MCCC again so I understand? Could you explain the history of where it is? Yeah, although Mac or someone else who's from the neighborhood may know it more than I do. I mean, it's, it's a broad group in more than three in neighborhoods that I know what all the other players are. Um, do you know more about them than they do? Well, it's, yeah, it's basically a conservation group that started in Ward 3 with a special interest in lands, conservation lands in Ward 3. And we've been working with the planning department to, you know, to take up these conservation restrictions and develop a memorandum of understanding. So we agree on how to manage the property, and we're still in process doing that. Like the Montefiore property you mentioned is, is very brushy now, and that's that's been hard to work out because of the wetland and the, the definition of what the buffer is going to be it was there. It at one time. Yeah, it was a cornfield at one point. Mm -hmm. and, I'm in a hay field. and most of us would like to see it return to an open condition like that, but it's been very difficult to... I used to mow that crop before. This is a part of it. Okay, it would you mold. come back? Well, this is after so many years. No, you're going to wetland. That's hard to get back. Years. That's it. Right, so, so in terms of land, basically it's all the land of the, you know, it's sort of shaped like an end, 
Oh, okay. the property to the left. Yeah. It's going to be left yeah. untouched. Yeah. The property to the right. Yeah. 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 As you face the property, yeah. the, face the, house it is the door Nash oh, door oh, Nash's oh, home, oh, home oh, there. Oh, On the left side oh, there. That's the land between the house and what used to be the main street school. Yes, that's correct. That's It's not going to be touched. That's grown up to wetlands and buffer zone. Everything on the right side, we'd love it to be cut, whether it's hay for production or for kids to run around, that would be the neighborhood issue. So, so Conscom is sort of property in two categories. Mm -hmm. Property that's, in essence, in a pristine condition, mm -hmm. as pristine as you get in New England, <coughs> and that's really managed primarily for wildlife and people walking, and then land that's really primarily managed for neighborhood use. And the neighborhood ones, we leave it to the neighborhood, so we don't really care. Well, my question on this is uh, if MCCC is given management rights uh, and, and, and in terms of management responsibilities, uh, is there any uh, proposal for the use of that land? Has anybody got any idea what's going on here? <laughs> well, it isn't clear what the, what the management rights or responsibilities are yet because we're still working that out with the city. We're going to go through the conservation commission and find out what they can, you know, what they can cut, what they can't because right. it's reserved back in the wetlands and because of certain conditions, there's buffers that have to be maintained. So where those buffers are established means what you can and can't do right now. And right. also, you know, I'm interested to hear that the city is paying for cutting because nobody is helping us with any finances over there. So it's volunteers who are cutting it down, and that's why it's getting so brushy along the road going into Town Farm, and that whole area that used to be farmed is completely overgrown at this point. Well, we're not paying for it. We, as we're trying to put in our management, one of our top goals is not to pay for it. So I know. We haven't paid for cutting for anyone. But our, one of our top goals is to get you to do it. <laughs> I think there's a mediator needed. Yeah, we'll go for mediation. That's right. So, plan use is formalizing a memorandum of understanding and conservation restrictions. Sounds to me like this thing is ongoing. It's not really. It's not resolved. Right. Ongoing. They haven't been ready to take it. We offered one a year ago, and they needed to do more discussion about it. But then, on the other hand, there's a danger with this land. Is <coughs> uh, if, unless something is formalized or fairly soon, I imagine it's probably going to be in danger of not yep. being abused to anyone. Right? Yep. Well, yeah. Have you talked to Ben James at all? Is he yeah. Ben's interested in any way? It's been a, you know, if I could just to um, chime in. It's been a very long process. We've been working for a number of years <coughs> already with the city around this since the group left that was farming, uh, that had the uh, mm. permaculture farm. So I think we all agreed we were going to leave that, not touch it, even though it needs to be repaired because they left chips down and it, what they left it, there are trees there, everything is completely overgrown, but somehow we just stepped back and decided I think with the Conservation Commission, or to just let it go this year while we worked out the arrangement and that we would then by, you know, come whatever, the spring next year have a way to move forward, maybe on both parcels. Am I saying that correctly? You know, because there are three of us here from the neighborhood. So, mm -hmm. so, but it's in process, you know, it isn't clear so what's going on. you them deeper the roots of the grass? I know, the but the thing is they left trees there. There are trees planted there. And, you know, what would we do with the trees? You know, they, they're, like, there are, if you go over there, you'll see. So we haven't, nobody knows what to do with it. So it's yeah, sitting there. It was supposed to remain as grassland, so we're trying to get Implement that management plan. Back to that, and then right. It's true. So again, almost done. So what is the brush? Two years old. I know about this discussion, so I don't really know. What's that? Sorry. Uh, how old is the brush? Two years or a year and a half? It's uh, on the well on the left side. It's basically a year. Yeah, most you know? of it's a year. <laughs> it uh, looks on, like on ten right years. Side, but it's what would you say on the right side? Since they left. Um, Two years. Yes. Three. That's yeah. already deep rooted. Yeah. I would say it sounds to me like uh, 
the NCCC is probably going to have to do some fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some boots yeah. on the ground. I think, yeah. you know, we, we do. And, and, and as soon as the, the, the CR on it gets uh, you know, figured out, uh, I think that the neighborhood has the, has the, the workforce to kind of step in there. Might be able to yeah. get some machinery. Um, uh, Eddie Gorotsky's department, didn't he? And he used to cut it for us. He um, used to brush hog it at one time. Yeah. I thought he grew a he got a little nervous about the weather. He, he did, did uh, he purpose. did. Yeah, right. his dad did. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's too bad that, that couldn't be encouraged. It's it seems like it worked out well with that. Yeah. But, yeah. It's yeah. been very difficult to work it out. That's all well, I, I have a suggestion. Yes. MCCC, till the land. Planted the pumpkins and <laughs> I'm serious. And have a fundraiser yeah. for Bridge Street School. There you go. That's what we used to well, do. These are the kinds of things that, you know, it but, can be a kind of a lot of fun, but, but uh, it's also a lot of work. But, yeah. but this was the problem yeah. that Rick was talking about with the former leaseholders yeah. that they planted trees and they left them there. And it's not just trees, but there are whole areas that are continued because it was a forest garden. So there's trees, and then there's understory, and then there's a, so there's herbs, and there's trees, and there's all this stuff. And we just haven't, you know, because the city, the conservation commission, and we are in discussions about this of how and should we and should we leave it? Should we take it? We offered grow far, food, I think, to come and take the trees away, but you know, it's just not been a very easy thing to solve. I'm sorry to say that. But there, there, it's safe to say there hasn't always been a consensus in the neighborhood. It's a Conscom sort of business world mediating, you know, and sort of, I think our model is the neighborhood just decides and we don't get involved. And it hasn't well, we're pretty much in, well, whatever. We're, it, we're in the process of working out with the Conscom. I think that's a wonderful idea for the Bridge Street School. I think it's a great idea. I think it's something to think about. I wonder if the neighbors would rally around that. Yes, but who would take yeah. the trees down, for instance? Well, I think that's clear. Who will get it back to the original It's going to require shape. some heavy lifting, but once it's done, if you can do that and get that land back into shape, it's going to be so much easier in the long haul. Well, there's nobody using it. You could hope the fallow would rye or something, but we, right. the weeds won't be there. And that's right. what they lay two or three years right. and use it. It'll be just as be better than, than it was before. Well, we right. were very concerned about that. Remember, John, we had a discussion yeah. on that whole piece of property. That's one of that's the, was the, all up. we had was that's a little brush. It was, it was a shame because that's that's good tillable land. I know. Yeah. It's, it's very, good. very, very good. Very land. rich soil. It is. Very good. But, but you'd like to see it go on grass for the kids more. Right? There's a or field there that's a playing field, but still there's a the lot high, around yeah, it yeah, that, yeah, that, that needs to be And at least set it up for future agriculture if there's you know a purpose that seems fit for over the tree is just out of control. We're, we're, we're not going to be able to reclaim it like, like you were saying. How big are the trees right now? There's, oh, there's some big ones trees. in the back. There's a little finger of a, a wetland, and they've been, we've, we've stayed out of it. We've been sort of like in this holding pattern. So I would say the biggest ones out there are maybe four to five years. And then there's a, oh. a couple of them. Yeah, so It'll take a small backhoe. You can you can pick them right out of there. Really? After the trees cut, those yeah. those roots will turn right out. Yeah, we we worked hard a couple of days. We chipped a lot of it. Yeah, picking the nice sumac. We'll be there all year. We got, we got trees there. No, there are fruit, but the fruit trees are bigger than two inches. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah <laughs> The fruit trees are big. There's almonds. There's pears. I don't even. I don't even know exactly what is there. Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to see better once the you know the fall gets a little farther along. I think it starts settling down. We'll see the, the trees that Claudia is talking about. But I, th I think we can still get it. But if we wait another year, it's going to be a lot. There's no way anything through Smith School could. They could you could involve the kids to clean it up. I, I think so. That's a great, yeah, that's a great, great idea. idea. I, 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 I mean, they, I mean they, they they have equipment and they have the, the shop to, to do it. I mean, I don't know where that. I think MC three is willing to you know, look into all those those possibilities of classrooms. The pumpkin idea is awesome. We need to get it finalized, sort of with the yeah. city, that, that we get this. MC3 has some authority to, to make some decisions. So 
and I think Ben would help us do it, but we haven't, it hasn't been worked out with the city yet, exactly what can we do and who well, should what's, do it. What's the time frame on it? I mean, we've got, somebody's got to set a point upon which you've got to have the decision. Do you have any idea what that, what that is? Well, you know, I'm doing the CR part, but I'm not sure they can do it. I mean, I would think that by next growing season, wouldn't you like to think that that could yes, be resolved? Yeah. 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 I think that's a goal. Is that possible? I don't know what you're talking about. To let that piece go, yeah. especially now that it uh, looks like that the mismanagement is in, is, they're out, out of the way. You know, uh, it's too bad that that can't be turned around. And, uh, uh, I, I wonder if we paid a good would, 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 they, would they require a visit to the conservation commission to get this resolved? Or what? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I mean, you were quite an event on it. Again, I haven't involved in the MOU process. I'm not sure. We would probably have to ask for a one time uh, permission to, to cut in, in the buffer zone. Uh, if that was your question. I'm not sure. Well, we're talking really about the other side of the property where the where the little farm was. The, r the right oh, side. Right out next to Ben Right. That's right. Away. I think right. that's, all, besides a couple of older fruit trees, uh, maybe. I think most of it can still be brushed. Put that little square right right back into the right. into condition and worry about the other stuff after. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a shame to let it all go when right. you can when right. there's still manageable parts you can take care of. We've managed to kind of hack pathways through so if there is some access we sort of you know try to keep it cut up a little bit so that well, a small backhoe will take all that out of the ground. Bring it on in. That's I think the brush. spring is reasonable to think we'll have well, some in place. It sounds like there's some interest yeah. here because yeah. you're all in the neighborhood. It seems like it's and something it's that uh, we'd all be very proud of. Yes, definitely. And we, we are working very hard to resolve it because we've been working for all these years consistently to try to come up with a plan. It was left a big mess, and that was the problem, really. Would it be good to ask if the group could be here at our, one of our spring meetings and just sure. give us an update on that? Yes, sure. that, that would be very good. good. I'd love to see what you come up with. I think one of the lessons, I mean, if I could just add, is that it was left a mess by the farmers. They mm -hmm. just left, and they left us with this huge mess, us being the neighbors and the city or whomever, and there has been no, and that's been difficult to deal with, you know, because Right. I think it's interesting in what you're looking at tonight the, the list before that, you know, one acre is being farmed and you're asking that they, they keep the brush down on the other four. If that had occurred at Monty, we wouldn't have this problem, but the farmers who licensed that farm didn't use any mechanical equipment. So they were wholly unable to care for that one. And then it just sort of, this is where we ended up. That's, that's farming. Some things work and some things don't. I mean, that's, 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 that's just the way it goes. Yeah, I mean, remember, you beer from year to year. Yeah, yeah. If you've been through that experience, if it's over, you can start again. We're well, going forward. We're trying. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying. It goes back to the reason we have a bias to renewing leases. It is we find someone who's good. We want to stick with them and not really? play with these new Don't new let parties. them get away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next one is one you heard during during public comment is the one on Sylvester Road. Um, currently, the license is good for another two years, three years. Um, it might be 16. I can't remember. I need to check on that. So it's either December 31st, 2016, or 2017. I'm sure it's not um, This is also like all these things. That, you know, the biggest problem we have, I'm sure you all have as farmers, is so the brush on the edge. There's so an area of artificial <laughs> drainage. Uh, by the way. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Carson's son. Henry? Yeah. Henry contacted me. Yeah. And he, would, he has contacted me on that. Uh, he contacted me in June uh, to go into the boom more and to mow that and okay. knock that back. But they no till their corn in, and I was right up to my eyeballs and I couldn't get in there. So I just want to make it on the record that uh, Henry has asked that to be the brush to be put there, uh, put there back under the direction of our new uh, okay. that, that was the condition of our, of our last license, is they pushed the brush back. And if you go for the drainage up as well. Well, well I, I moved the drainage. 
Oh, you do the ground? Yeah. Okay. I, I, work, I did it for the homeowner. Okay. okay. And I went around actually halfway to the back part of the cornfield and I did everything in the front. So is it just these mowing or is it actually somebody to get on the back cover to open up the room? Well, what happened is he, he subcontracted some farm, I don't know, bars. Somebody would a uh, John Deere track machine. He got it stuck in the ditch area and he, made a, he buried the machine in there. And what happened is he made some ruts in there and the water's not going through. But I got in there and just bar mowed that. But it, it should be kind of cleaned out. Okay. Um, so so he, I think that's what his license is supposed to do, sort of clean up. Yeah, he should have, you know, he got the track machine stuck in there. He should have went back at least, but the <laughs> ditch opened up and it just stood there. I mean, I fell in there with my track and it's a deep hole in there. So. But to, just to back up Henry, Henry is aware of that. Okay, that's good. Okay. So this is the one that's not farm organic, but he's got a Roundup Ready corn or something like that. So that's the area you've heard comments earlier. And I actually came back <laughs> and actually went back to the farm and actually did some work on it. Yeah. 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 It's just sort of an ongoing conversation, and I wanted to say some things that I've been thinking about in terms of Roundup and also in terms of um, the process of notifying neighbors about when and on the The Roundup, it's, I just wanted to share that this, this awareness that even though it's been certified as safe. There are studies, like the studies that have been done are saying it's safe because the glyphosate affects the plants and not the people because the plants have a chimate pathway, an amino acid pathway, and that's how the glyphosate works as it goes through that pathway. I'm no scientist, I don't, you know, I, but, um, but people don't have that pathway. And so they say, oh, it affects plants, but not people. Um, but the thing is, other kinds of organis organisms do have that pathway, like bacteria. And we have gut bacteria that are crucial to our functioning. So studies that say, like, oh, it doesn't affect us because we don't have this pathway, and plants do, it affects plants, but not us, seem very limited in their scientific, you know, rationale of why it's safe. So that makes me feel, I mean, that among other things makes me feel like, you know, I'm not, I'm not good to go with this idea of that Roundup is safe. Um, they also say if it's used under certain conditions and sprayed under certain conditions, then it's fine. But living on the edge of that field, I, um, have been in communication with Henry Parsons and he, um, was really great about, like I had said, can you let me know when I'm going to spray? And he was really great about trying to do that. But crop production services themselves didn't know because it was so rainy. And they were just, you know, needing to grab any time they could to spray all the fields that they had, you know, contracted to spray. And so on a given afternoon, it would be like, um, maybe, maybe today, maybe not, maybe next week. So the idea that they're going to wait, if there's a window of time when it's not raining in the rainy season, and they're going to wait for winds to like to make sure that it's under 10 miles an hour or whatever, doesn't really, I don't trust that, you know, that they're going to be able always to follow those exacting um, conditions for safe spraying. So that was something that I'm also just adding to the mix. Um, you know, the conservation land is right up next to people's um, people's residences and so I'm con concerned about that. So the, the history for you guys at the same time we converted Elwell, we looked at converting a site for the and we haven't looked at recently but we couldn't find a farm over there. The problem is of course Elwell's closer to a lot of farmers around so there weren't many people in this area. So I'm just sort of putting that in with the, the other thoughts people have had about other land, like the, um, the land near Grow Foods, um, and looking at methods yeah. that the city, you know, 
city plan is the same place. So, so the current plan, again, to hear your feedback, is saying that when his license is up, is exploring if we can find somebody who wants to do organic, but, he, but the trade-off is, but at least our current plan is, but not at the expense of losing a farmer's there. So, you know, if we have two farmers who want it, giving preference to somebody who's organic, but not putting it on So, years before we owned it, I mean, he, he farmed it when Armin owned it. So, 20 years or something like that. I mean, 20 years under our own. Right. That's right. And the point is fairly recently. Uh, yeah, the last two, like two years. years. Yeah. So this has been a very, very extremely difficult year for anybody in the farming business. And I think they struggle with that person. I know that he is so wet. Because of the wet conditions yeah. and trying to get in there in a timely manner. To, uh, get, and on one side, uh, you're going no till, uh, and you're, you're preserving the soil. You're not, you're going to get, crop residue that's left is great for uh, preserving the soil and even good for the wildlife resurgence. Now, on the other hand, in order to use no-till, there's a roundup application that's needed. And it's a, it's a tough question, I, I know. But um, I think Henry's tried very, very hard on that. Um, could he try harder? Maybe. And maybe it's not entirely Henry's fault. Maybe uh, I've dealt with crop reduction before. They're struggling sometimes to get in there in a timely manner. So, so that's, a, you know, that's, that's a tough thing. We had 12 inches of rain. I mean, it was on my rain gauge. We had 12 yeah, inches. So did I. We didn't get the only good thing is I'm growing on gravel, so yeah. it was great for me. It's just, it's just been a horrendous, horrendous year. Um, but it, 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 this is where you get torn because it's being actively farmed and the man needs the land for his cows. And he really, really does. And he, he always struck me as being a very sincere person. Uh, so, well, at least when we not, we don't need to make decisions quickly because there's a lot of next release. But it's sort of, it's, it's worth having discussions. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, if he was interested in either going back to hay or doing sort of doing the chemicals, mm -hmm. then we're not going to renew the lease in the license for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just want to say, like, I have a lot of respect for Henry. And how uh, he's been in communication during this, okay. um, during this thing we've been trying to figure out. So. Um, then the last two, these are, I guess, I'm about ready to give up on, but we used just <laughs> parcels we acquired and really sort of thought, you know, it's the same combination of if we don't deal with it, brushes coming up, they're never going to be farmed again. Um, we've reached out a little bit, I think I called John about one of these parcels, we called Grove Food Camps about one of the parcels, we called couple other people who are in the area. Um, the Chesterfield Road one was never incredibly high quality. It was probably pasture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it's north facing. Um, but at least it's still, the brush isn't that big in it yet. The one further south has partially an overgrown field and partially a pine plantation. It's obviously a huge project, but pine plantation doesn't really fit the conservation area. So it's like, could we get rid of them? Is this some use for them? And so it's on my books as wouldn't it be nice? But yeah, the yeah. trouble is, I mean, I, I don't think that is even a particular stuff out would be an acre. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, it's, if they were milk, milk these was. Oh, yeah, I'll write just up from the store. So I was there. Okay. the moving cows or the little barn up there. Yeah, on Sylvester back in the 60s. And one day on I mean, Saturday, I remember. <coughs> Getting very specific, but I remember this about that land because that land up there was ideal for grazing. You know, yeah, well, Vagel, I used to do it. It was always that ideal, was yeah. and there was always a couple of fellows up there who had a couple of cows. Uh, Vagel was a cow. Vagel, yeah, he that's what it was. I remember moving the cow and the land. And, um, but that land was always suited for that, not yeah. for the Yeah. Bill yeah. um, Mark of Eggman wants to graze. Llama. <laughs> <laughs> you think you know the thing that's, that's really hurt a lot of this has been the uh, mechanization of the dairy business. You know? yeah. Yeah. Well, the problem with those yeah. is it's predators. Yeah. You know, unless you're on site, yeah. you know, you leave right. them in a pasture, <laughs> you're taken. It's just, I mean, they're going through the yard all the time. <laughs> well, look at the bobcat that was in the paper in Brian Road School. Right? Kind of interesting. You have a turkey farm. 
For what? We get a turkey farm. If by the brook, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, no hope for the one on Sinestro Road and Ryan Road. How about for the one on Chester Road? Any hope for that one? Well, the one on Chester Road. Road. Five acres ish. You know, it, it, it gets worse and worse. Like there's a core that's good, and then you get closer to, to I think there's pines or fir that kind of do it. Where is that? So this is the property we got from from uh, John Sarafin that faces north. So right. Oh, I know where it is. is it, in other words, the Chesapeake Road intersects. Uh, uh, like you? Road. You're talking just about east that of that. Is, well, that was a grazing field for years. That's right. And uh, that's really. I don't know if Henry Sarafin really took any hay off of there, but basically that was always an area for heifers and so on and so forth to graze on. That's where. That's where the problem. Is. Yeah, 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 and then the problem is, I mean, if you're going to grade, that, those fences have got to go, yeah. get all done. That's, a, that's an egg of a bench right there. That's a hell of a fence. That's just time. You have to be out of the material. I know exactly what that means. I know what you mean by this. It's fine. If you say we should not we should just give up, that's fine. So I, I want you to get it off my books and say we're never going to do it or do something. There's, there's no money to, to bush hog anything, right? I mean, and, and either deep. No, the problem is whip grants, the NRCS grants, we're not eligible for. So as far as you guys can whip grants are becoming harder and harder for anybody right now. That's a lower priority in the yeah. farm bill. Well, I mean, like, doesn't, doesn't Amherst spend money on conservation land bush hogging it once yeah, a year? Yeah, they're a lot richer than there. Huh? They're a lot richer than there. No, no, yeah. But, but, yeah I mean, but I mean, yeah, we have nothing yeah. in North Hampton. And Smith Oak, no. I mean, Smith Oak has from time to time willing to do that kind of thing. And we've certainly done, I mean, we typically do a three year license. We can go to council to get permission for a longer license. So we've occasionally we're asking a farmer to make more investment, giving them a longer time yeah, period yeah. to amortize. Say so you guys put Christmas trees in front of you. Right, right. Right, that's the thing. I mean, you know, frankly, right. Christmas trees might be okay there. I think that's a that's a good news for that. But yeah, you gotta find the right Again, person. There's a situation where you had the surf and platform there and it was perfect. I mean that was an ideal place for them to raise their Right. And they're called, they're, 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 but it only takes well, yeah, like it only takes a couple of years yeah. to yeah. take over. I know it's probably been yeah. Yeah, six years. I know when it's oh, more okay. than that. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Well, right. the other thing is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Arboriculture would be the next use for that property. property you know? and it sounds uh, harvesting lumber someday. How about the Mineral Hills Winery? Can they grow grapes there? Yeah, he's looking for land, but I guess he, he's going to... Hey, Larry's a good guy. Yeah, I can imagine he's doing something. Good in the Well, the trouble is, is can, where we can get water from it. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a big thing with vineyards, is being able to supply the water. Well, plus it's, another thing is, you know, some predators up there. Uh, the deer are, uh, I would assume, the issue. Yeah, it's really easier to watch it or something. It's, 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 all of us, you know, after a while, you know, especially the vegetable farmers, you know, um, you know, you're farming for yourself, but you're also fighting off these predators, you know, you know for the predators for the vegetables. It's amazing, because we were down on Long Island this summer, See. and some of the farms down there, they've got 10-foot fences around it, because there's so much deer, right. that if they don't fence off these different areas, mm -hmm. they don't get much out of those fields. You're easy to lose track of the other part of the place. Can I, say, I want to go through quickly before I lose you yeah. all from the pumpkins. Um, so the last one I listed is just the APRs. I want to give you an update on three, and then there's one I do want to talk about exactly the okay. So just very quickly, parcel D, this is the land office of the jail. It's state-owned. Um, we had legislation 19 years ago. That the state would give us an APR on it, and they finally did that. So it took a while for them to get it. Um, sure. it doesn't, this school hated a couple of times. Some students hated, hey, they don't have a long, you know, the rest of the farmland they have in any of their lease. Mm -hmm. This they don't have a long term lease. John Kelly called me, so I'm still talking to the state. So 
they've been hitting like occasionally. Right. Well, they, they, this the piece up above, right across from the jail, that's giving the golden rod a lot of yeah, yeah. jump down. Um, but at least it's now mm -hmm. protected as far. You know, like they, the state can't change it. Anyway. Russell's a very small parcel. It's like four acres or something um, uh, in the meadows and. Uh, the state is going to buy an APR, the city will contribute 20% towards this. Um, so it is on Cross Path Road Extension, right by the water pipe, the stand pipe we were talking about. It's the land just on uh, south of that, that pipe. Um, so, you know, it's a small piece, it's not a big one, but it's, you know, it's a little bit counts. It's, uh, it's, it's one and a half acres. No, I'm sorry. It's, uh, they exclude one and a half acres for the house, but I don't have the size of the lawn. Um, so we have a little bit of that uh, APR money from CPA, um, and the deal for the APR money is we can only spend it if both the CONSCOM and CPA approve it. And so we'd love to ask you guys to approve it. It's not much, because this is, we're only doing 20%, the whole thing we can use that kind of really. Um, this extension. Where's that job? What are you looking for? Cross, cross, cross Path Road Extension. Cross Path Road Extension used to go into the Pool for Girls okay. campus. All right, so it's at the intersection of Jersey Remember 50 and years path. ago, if you went all the way down past the fourth or fifth house, the, the gate opened at an apple orchard, all kinds of playing fields, so they went right up against the bank. Mm -hmm. So this is, you go on in the interstate as we go to the airport. Okay. You make a sharp right. And then yeah. when that road makes a sharp left, yes, correct. if you left that road and keep driving straight, you'd be in Russell's property. So she's that yeah, that's the Ferris Street extension. Right next to Bill for Paris, you know right, where right, right. cut is? The, all that land is basically... Yeah, yeah. So is, it, is it Ferris Street extension, not, yeah. not, uh, not cross path road? It's Ferris Street extension. Ferris Street extension of what? What's the, it's not Ferris Street and cross path extension? No. Oh, okay, then I was sorry. Cross path runs behind the fairgrounds, but when it crosses Ferris Street, it was, it was dead end to a section of the gate with the old group, the old North Ham School for Girls. Okay, I'm sorry. So and, uh, they had an apple orchard before right, you hit right. the campus. This isn't named Bill Paris is, is coming right now. Is yeah, it? some of it is. It is. Okay. Because yeah. he's that Gary He's right next to the standpipe. Right. Gary, remember that fellow Gary that on that parcel there? But next to Bill's uh, Russell? Yeah, is that his name? Yeah. No, so that's his widow, that's right? A, that's his widow. And she wants that. to put that into APR? I assume that's what she's doing. Okay, yeah. right. So it's that parcel with the... It's, it's got, got a big hole. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> all right. So that's... It's okay. not conducive for potatoes, but yeah. it's too wet. Right. You know, I, I farmed that land uh, for... You hay. took hay out there. <clears throat> and I called up the um, soil conservation district. Mr. Konecki, one of the... Carl's brother, was... Uh, yeah, and I, I asked him, I said, I'd like to get in there with a bulldozer and see if we could fill that in. He says, no one, no way in hell you're going to do that. <laughs> so I, I rather learn very quickly that that can't be done. I thought it would be great to push the water further back, you know, and have some nice sea land. Right so what do you look for? So this one looking at motions is important as an I mean, as small as it is, 20%, it can't be that much. Mm -hmm. so, it's a nice piece. I mean, if it doesn't get too wet, and then, uh, that hollow is an issue. But it, it's also, know. frankly, really important to us for precedent mm -hmm. because the, the wisdom is the state wouldn't do APRs in the meadows because they do just between development value mm -hmm. and farm value. And the fact that we don't do this one, it's not, it's not a big value, but they basically say, yeah, you couldn't develop a house back there, but you could still do a go-kart track, or you could still do something that would be as far as... And so that, the fact that we don't have to pay a difference is, this is the first time we've had the state we don't have to pay... When we did Jasinski, that was all city money. Um, and so the fact that the first one is really important to us, because we can't afford to do all city money. So, getting a was really nice. I'll make a motion to support both APRs. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Benches Street Road, this isn't going anywhere fast, but just so you know, this is a parcel of land. Um, when you go down Benches Field Road, if you're coming from Mafia and you cross the dike on the left side, it's all farmland and suddenly it's a solid piece of wooded property, and then it's farmland again. That was the old jail farm that we were working for the jail. Um, 
and the land in front is well. So it's overgrown, not just because it hasn't been farmed, but it's well. The land in back, you know, usually is the issue of land being live, it's live fallow for 20 years isn't great. But fortunately, one of the neighbors has been trespassing for all these years, which is really good, because it means the brush isn't coming up. <laughs> um, so there's a parcel of land that has brush and have to be, I mean, it's trees that have to come down, and there's a parcel of land that needs to be done. So we're trying to get states, state legislation so we can get it back into production. Whether the city owns it, the city owns it, I don't care. But either we would own it, and the state would own the APR on it, or the state would own it, and we would own the APR on it. Um, and again, I'd just like to have a motion to get loan so we can ask Representative Cocod to sponsor legislation to say, yes, we'd like to do this. Take it back. The rice is in pure rolled back, right? I mean, it has, does it have a little frontage on it? It's a little bit frontage. That's, this place is all wellings. Yeah. And it goes all the way back almost to Collins Church, where there's a. Is that where it's got soybeans on it now? I mean, it's right. It's yeah. right here. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you lay, right? That's when you lay, yeah. Yeah. I think Bayes farmed it or something probably. That's what it that says behind Bayes' garage, basically. Yeah, right. yeah that's right. Yeah. 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 That's the side that's actually grown up. It's when glazed yeah. the side. It's that you fit. Happy to trespass. How large is it? We have to have a survey. So I could tell you a better number, but it's eight acres ish. And if you email me, I can check the survey. And tell you eight acres it. total or eight acres usable? I'm making up the numbers. I'm not really exactly yeah. sure anyway. I would guess it's eight. Again, we do the survey. Right. I guess it's eight acres total, mm -hmm. of which maybe six acres is usable. But that's really just. Right. But this one, like the other one, is the motion where actually you know, buy this. This was really just so we could ask city council to ask mm -hmm. Hillcock to introduce something rather than that staff. So you're looking for a motion? Yeah. Please. A motion that uh, we encourage uh, Representative Hillcock to ask the legislature's uh, uh, money for the idea. Favor? Aye. Okay, and then, so the, the only other thing I have is um, discussion of APIs under negotiation. So for this one, I'm asking for an executive session. Um, the process is to go to the next session to talk about land acquisition. Somebody has to make a motion, it's a roll call vote. Um, and then if that passes, then you could announce that we're not going to, we're going to in the meeting right after this, we'll be going back to the session. I'll make a motion to go into the second session. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That means we leave, right? Yep. Bye -bye. That means we leave, but if you want to stay and keep it confidential, you're welcome to, because you're the one who started this process.